Well, hey friends, welcome to my daily update video. Coming to you live from France. This is my uh, village where I have a home in uh, Chambon sur Lignon in France and wishing you well. I'm here today with uh, Dylan. We're having a coffee here on the place. Excuse all the noise. <coughs> Leah has gone for a hike and I believe is going to Ikea. Pray for her. <laughs> Pray for me. And uh, having a coffee here, uh, just doing some work for a sermon series for August, and I thought I'd make a quick video. So hey, in a moment, I want to share with you um, just four keys I found to just practically live out the Christian life. You know, I'll come to this in a sec, but I'm a pragmatist. I love practical things, and I love things that really work in practice. I'm one of those people, if I read a book, I usually want to read the intro and then I want to get to the part, the how to do it, how to put this in practice. I never, I always have a problem as it were with great, wonderful ideas. And then I'm part of me is always saying, yeah, but how do you actually do them? What does do look like in these things? So I will jump into that in a moment, give you four keys for that. Hey, before I do that, a few quick housekeeping things. I'm in France today. Flying back to the US on Wednesday. I'm going to be in my churches in New England this coming Sunday. For the whole month of August, I'm going to be speaking on abiding in Christ. And I really encourage you to be there and uh, join us for some of those meetings. I have a new course that should be out later this week on abiding in Christ. Sermon notes, uh, lots of videos, audios, all those good things. So love to connect with you then. Uh, I have some travel dates open for the end of the year for uh, late November and early December. So if you're interested in uh, churches and connecting with me, I'm gonna be booking three-day revivals towards the end of this year. And in 2024, let me know if that's something you're interested in. Hey, if you're on our YouTube channel, when I hit the subscribe button down there, I think we're uh, to about 35,000 subscribers, which is great. Thank you guys for helping us with that. I encourage you to sign up for our email newsletter, link below. All of the things going on in my ministry, too many to mention. And lastly, if you're not yet a uh, follower of Jesus, I'd love to talk to you about your soul, about where you are with God, about what does it truly mean to become a follower of Jesus and how you can step into that new life. Drop me a line if you're interested in setting up a Zoom call or a phone call at your convenience to talk about Jesus. Boom. Good, so let me read a verse here many of you will know in uh, John chapter 8. In John 8, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and they are, as it were, making the claim, we are Abraham's children. You know, I, I believe in Israel, I believe in God's ongoing, permanent, eternal promises to the nation of Israel. Um, and yet, it's really important that we never fall we never fall in love with Israel, we fall in love with the God of Israel. And Jesus is really clear whenever he's talking to Jewish people, he's like, you know, God will raise up children from stones. You know, anybody who's nearer to God, who's seeking God is nearer than you are. There's advantages to being Jewish, to being part of the nation of Israel, but you can never bypass Jesus, the Messiah. He is the way, he's the only way. There's not a second way. It's not the Jewish way and then the Jesus way. Jesus is the Jewish way. And uh, Jesus says in John 8, he's talking about, uh, in verse 31, he says to the Jews who believe, if you abide in my word, then you, my disciples indeed, you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. And Real quick today, I think, I'll be honest, I've lived a lot of my life with a lot of Bible knowledge that I didn't always have the experience for. And I think it is, uh, especially in the circles in which I uh, spend time, I guess, I pass, spirit-filled circles, faith circles, charismatic circles, whatever. I, I meet a lot of people who've been believers for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and you name any subject, and they're ready to give you a little mini sermon on it. They're ready to share some thoughts on it. They've got some ideas and they're basically good ideas. And I agree with 95% of what they say. But so often we live in a realm where we have ideas that we're not actually living. We have ideas and yet our experience doesn't match up with the reality of those. And again, I'm a pragmatist. I'm a real practical person. Um, 
So I just real quick want to talk today about how do we turn Bible truth into Bible experience? Because the Bible is a book of truth. It's a book of knowledge, but it's also a book of experience. The Bible is, a, is like a menu. I'm sitting here outside of a restaurant today. One of them is closed, the other one's open. And outside all French restaurants, they have the menu outside for people before they commit, before they sit down, will sit down and read the menu and see what's available. And the menu, you can't eat the menu. You can't go there and lick the menu. You might get arrested. Uh, the menu can't satisfy you. There are no nutrients and vitamins and carbs and proteins, etc., in the menu. The menu speaks of a greater reality. Jesus said that to the Jews. He said, search the scriptures. You guys think you've got truth. You think you've got life because you've got a scroll with words in it. And yet he said, the very thing written in your scroll speaks of me. It's not that your scroll is wrong, it is perfectly the word of God. But he said, that word, that book, that scroll you have speaks of me. And he said, you won't come to me that you might have life. So four keys that will help you there in a second. But number one, I would actually say this. Now, maybe you're just more gifted than I am and you're better than this, but I would encourage you to take one to five simple truths. Probably one truth would be better or two truths. Or My point is have, have something you want to appropriate, you want to step into in this season. Why not just take one thing or maybe two things or three things, but certainly less than five things. Have a few different things that you can keep coming back to several times during the day and sinking on and encountering. You know, you'd be better taking ground with God in one area of your life in this season than trying to memorize 57 things and step into those. So I want to encourage you. Four quick steps. Number one, step number one, take one truth. Take a really simple, glorious truth. Take something you know that you know that you know, but that you know that you're not exactly experiencing in the way God wants you to. Why not take that one thing? I've been meditating on this verse all week in Galatians 2.20, but I've really kind of reduced it down to four words. Christ lives in me. Ooh, I get goosebumps now every time I say that. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ, yet I live. Not I who live, but Christ liveth, O King James, in me. The life I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. But Christ lives in me. So number one, take a verse. Number two, learn to sit in God's presence. Now, I don't care how charismatic you are and how many great sermons and how many times you've quoted practicing the presence of the Lord by Brother Lawrence, but haven't actually read it. <laughs> Most of us actually struggle a little bit with sitting quietly in God's presence, with waiting on the Lord. We charismatics, we like to do things. We want to come in God's presence and pray this and pray that and the courts of heaven and pray in tongues on one leg and doing many different things. And I think if we're going to allow the life of the Word, the life of the Spirit to come into our heart, I believe we need to learn to sit with God and sit quietly in God. And I just want to encourage you, it's, it's a really helpful thing to hear this. Don't worry if your flesh doesn't like this. Don't worry if you're not very good at it. Just keep practicing. The more you practice, the more you will get better at this, the more you will improve at this. And if we really want to be practitioners, if we want to practice the presence of the Lord, well, hey, practice. My point is, why not learn to, why not practice sitting with God for two minutes? And I'll be honest, for some of you watching this, if you actually did that, your flesh is going to say, oh, this is the longest two minutes of my life. Get over it. Just practice doing that. Where you're still, where you're still with the Lord, gird up the loins of your mind, where you don't allow yourself to run off and do something. Sometimes if I really want to be productive, I'll sit with God for a few moments and it's like a media, oh, I've got to do this, got to do that. My inner Martha, excuse me, kicks in. So number two, practice being in God's presence. Key number three, this is where we really get into the workman nearby here, where we get into the crooks of this. Practice hearing, take that verse, practice saying it, confessing it, yeah, but hearing the voice of the Spirit say that to you. Now again, pause. What I think the danger is, is we can learn a verse, we can memorize a verse. Some of us faith people, we can confess the verse. 
But you know, there's a world of difference in, in terms of me going around and saying, Galatians 2 verse 20, Christ lives in me, Christ lives in me, Christ lives in me. Yes, I believe Christ lives in me. Christ. And that's all mental. That's all fluff. That's all froth at the top of the cup. It's not real. And what we've actually got to do is sit there in the presence of the Lord, abiding in Him, be actually relationally connected with Him. And in that context, really hear the Lord say that to you, Graham, I live in you today. And I'll say it back to him, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, you live in me. And I, I encourage you to say those things slowly, say them in the first person, say them relationally. Allow the life of the Spirit, God is not rushed, he wants you to sit in his word and to literally allow the life of that word to flow into your life. Key number four, if we're gonna practice the things of God, is I would have a specific dedicated time every day where you sit in God, sit in his word, hear his truth, and then, and then, and then, and then, have a practice as you go through your daily life. And that's why I say just pick one, two, or maybe three things. Practice hearing the Lord say those things to you. Practice hearing the voice of the Spirit say to you. Just practice catching yourself. You're in the shower, you're driving, you're washing a few dishes, say, yeah. Christ, Lord, I thank you, you live in me. And rather than trying to drum up some emotional thing, here's what we do. Here's the way of turning a truth into relational reality. Thank the Lord that it's true. Rather than saying, oh God, I want to feel you live in me, say, Lord, I thank you. You live in me. You live through me. Your life, you're the vine, I'm the branch. You are flowing in and flowing through me today. And if we will catch ourselves doing that several times a day, it becomes easy, it becomes natural. I think a great prayer to pray is actually, Lord, I give you permission to gate crash my thoughts. If I get more than half an hour away from you, Lord, just give me a little much, give me a little poke. Crash my thoughts and remind me of your goodness. Say, Graham, hey, do that again. And I think we can practice abiding in him. He says, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, I and my Father will come and we will manifest ourselves to you. Boom, so four quick keys there. Number one, choose just one verse, two verses, three. Choose a small amount of verses. Number two, learn to sit with God, practice it. 30 seconds if you need to start there and then keep building that up. And after a while, you'll get used to it. After a while, your flesh will crave it. Number three, practice hearing the Lord say that to you relationally, devotionally, where it's him speaking to you, not just you repeating it like a parrot. And number four, practice, uh, practice practicing those things all the day long. Practice hearing his word again and again and again and uh, let him speak to you and refresh your soul, boom. Right, I'm gonna run and have another coffee. Have a great day wherever you are at. If you're traveling, uh, hi, my kids are traveling back to America today. Blessings on you guys. And uh, drop me a line. I'd love to see you soon in the plan of God. Check out all the links below and bye for now.